We need to talk about Grandpa Phil from Hey Arnold. Looking back on this show in hindsight, I always really appreciated him and the role that he plays throughout the series. With him being left as Arnold's guardian due to his parents being gone, he had some pretty big shoes to fill, which, in my opinion, he did very well. You're not a bad short man. I'm, I'm scared I can't find my mommy and daddy. Oh, now don't cry, you poor little fella. Hey, how about I tell you a warm, mythical bedtime story tonight? Yeah, that's the ticket. We know that Arnold's parents left for South America when he was still a young toddler and they never came back, which left Grandpa Phil and Grandma Pookie raising Arnold from a very early age. Judging based on Arnold's character seen throughout the show, they did a great job of raising a level-headed kid whose moral compass is always pointed in the right direction. Arnold is usually the keeper of the peace in his friend group, and he's commonly the one who tends to think things through from every angle possible. He's always doing the right thing and being conscientious of other people's feelings no matter what the situation is. All of these traits, as great as they are, are not usually inherited naturally though. They're behaviors that one learns through life experience and being raised that type of way. Arnold being who he is, sure, might have a lot to do with who his parents are and the traits that he gained from them. Without a doubt though, a lot of it certainly had to do with the way that he was raised by his grandma and grandpa. As it pertains to them though, I have a bit of a conundrum that I've come across. If you've seen my channel before, then you've probably seen my Dark Side of Hey Arnold series. If you haven't seen it yet, then you should totally check it out. I'll make sure to have it linked down in the description box below. But looking at the future of that series, I'm planning at some point in the timeline to do a video about Grandpa Phil and Grandma Pookie jointly. I love the idea of making one super long video where I cover both of them in detail, However, if that happens, it's gonna be further down the line. Those videos take me a super long time, and I think I have a couple more characters I want to cover first. As far as the present time goes though, there's one specific episode revolving around Grandpa Phil that I feel like we really need to talk about, like, right now. It's an episode that, if I'm being honest, makes me question everything that I thought I knew about Grandpa Phil and who he is as a person. Seeing this one as a kid, it definitely landed differently to me than it does now looking back at it as an adult. And that's why today, on our nostalgic walk down memory lane, we're gonna look at another classic episode of Hey Arnold. Before we get into it though, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here and for checking out this video. If you're new here, welcome to my channel and I really hope that you like the video. Please consider subscribing and clicking on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. And of course, if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for being a part of my YouTube journey. I really appreciate you so much. I do want to ask you guys for just a little favor. I'd love it if you could leave me a comment down below letting me know where in the world that you're watching this video from and what your opinion of Hey Arnold is. Did you grow up watching this show? Are my videos your first time seeing it? Let me know in the comments below because I always love hearing from you guys. Today, we're looking at the Season 4 episode, Back to School. This episode starts out late at night at the boarding house where Arnold is doing his math homework in the kitchen. He ends up struggling with a problem and asking his grandpa for some help. I know all kinds of math. Addition, subtraction, multiplication. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 6 is 30. Am I helping? Not really. I'm doing long division. Long, long division? Can you help? Okay, 3 and 2 is uh, and 22 times 14. That would be uh, that. And uh, the, the answer is 7. But the answer can't be 7, because... Oh, <laughs> of course, you're right. When Arnold questions if his grandpa learned long division when he was in fourth grade, Grandpa Phil begins to sweat, and he runs off saying that he has to take his medicine. Grandpa, it's just me, Arnold. You can tell me what's wrong. Oh, nothing, Arnold. 
Oh, all right, Arnold. I'll tell you the truth. I always knew this day would come when you would bring me homework I couldn't figure out. And long division with decimals is exactly as far as I got when I was a kid before... Before what? Before I quit, Arnold. I never finished the fourth grade. You never finished the fourth grade? Grandpa Phil sits Arnold down on the bidet and tells him a story of how he grew up as a kid. We see a young Grandpa Phil in school talking about how he always dreamed of getting his grade school diploma and becoming president someday. But then the Great Depression hit and his family fell on hard times. He wanted to stay in school, but he had to quit so that he could get a job to help support his family. I always said I'd go back to school, but well, one job led to another and I just never did. A grade school diploma. The one thing I've always wanted but never got. Couldn't you go back to school? Oh, I can't do that, Arnold. I'm too old. I've lost too many brain cells to make it through grade school. You're not too old, Grandpa. And you've still got plenty of brain cells. No, not since what's that. You can do it, Grandpa. Arnold pep talks his grandpa, saying that he can do this and that he has to chase his dreams. Grandpa Phil agrees, and next thing you know, we see him at PS 118 talking to Principal Wartz, who says that he expects Phil to be on his best behavior if he's going to be coming back to school. He then takes Grandpa to find his classroom. Does that mean he's going to be in our class? Nah, they wouldn't put Grandpa in our class. That'd be a little too weird. Students, let's all welcome your new classmate, Philip. Oh, it's Arnold's grandpa. Hey, good man. We're going to be classmates. All right, class, let's, let's put on our listening ears again. Phil, get out your pencil and open your math book to page 98. We were talking about decimals in long division. Did, 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 did you say long division? Don't worry, Grandpa, it'll be fine. After that, we get a nice montage of Grandpa Phil learning long division with Mr. Simmons. At first, it doesn't go too well, but by the end of the day, he's got it down without any issues. After school, we cut on over to the boarding house, where Grandpa is telling Pookie and the rest of the boarding house residents about how great of a job he did in school today. Why, that's wonderful, Phil! Yep, won't be long till I get that grade school diploma. And if you don't want to wear that fork, you better keep your paws off my dessert, Kakashka. The next day at school, we see Grandpa Phil take his seat in class. Mr. Simmons comes in and explains that he showed Phil's work from yesterday to Principal Wards, and it's been decided that he's going to be immediately promoted to the fifth grade. Everyone celebrates Phil and starts congratulating him for a job well done. Thanks, short man. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss all of you. Sit with your backwards hat and your teeny little white patent leather beetle boots. And you stinky. Grandpa, you'll be right next door. Oh, well, in that case, I'll just see you at recess. See you, suckers. We fast forward to recess, where we see Grandpa Phil come up to Wolfgang and some other fifth graders who are playing kickball. Since they're classmates now, Grandpa Phil comes up and asks if maybe he can join them, but Wolfgang laughs at him, saying that he'll probably just break a hip. Phil accepts his challenge, and we see him get in position for a kick. <laughs> Awesome kick, old guy. What's your name? Phil. Come on, Phil. Do this at lunch, okay? We head right back on over to class, where we see a nice montage of Grandpa Phil just crushing it and impressing everyone with his natural intellect. Later that night at dinner, he sits at the table with his family, telling them all that it's going so well that his teacher decided to promote him to the sixth grade after seeing his test scores. Arnold congratulates him, saying that he's surprised at how fast he's blowing through school like it's nothing. Yep, fifth grade was a snap. <laughs> I mean, how different can sixth grade be? <laughs> Later that night, we see Grandpa's overwhelm with grade school overlapping to his home life as he sits at the kitchen table, struggling to finish his homework. He ends up getting frustrated, and he gives up, making his way towards the closet, where we see him toss his graduation cap into the trash. Instead, opting for a leather jacket that seems to not have seen the light of day in quite a while. 
The next day at school, everyone stares in awe as Grandpa Phil walks through the door rather menacingly. He walks right up to that same kid from yesterday who bullied him, and this happens. What are you looking at? Hey, Connie, Maria, what you shaking, ladies? Grandpa, where are you going? We're gonna sneak into a PG-13 movie. But you're 81. You can get into a PG-13 movie anytime. Besides, it's a school night. Don't you have homework to do? Hey, quit bumming my trip, man. We get a weird montage of Grandpa Phil hanging out with these little girls as they play a prank on a theater employee. Phil even goes as far as spray painting a dumpster, which leads to him getting busted by the police. Next thing you know, we see him in Principal Wartz's office, just completely not caring about a thing as he's getting scolded for all the bad things that he's been up to. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, if you're done reciting my credits, I got some shoplifting to do. Young man, I'm beginning to wonder if you want to finish grade school. Young man, I'm beginning to wonder if you want to finish grade school. Pardon me? Pardon me? Stop repeating what I say. Stop repeating what I say. That's it! That's it! Young man, are you looking for trouble? Maybe. What do you got? Principal Wartz gives Phil one final warning, telling him that if he does one more bad thing, then he's gonna be expelled. To which, Phil responds by basically telling him to go shove it and pulling the fire alarm. Later that night, we see Grandpa Phil sitting in the alley behind the boarding house and tossing a ball when Arnold approaches him. He tells him that Principal Wartz called and said that he's really close to getting expelled for his bad behavior. Grandpa, what happened? You were doing great! You were passing all your tests! Don't you want to get your diploma? Forget it, Charmaine. I'm through with school. I'm chucking the whole education thing. But you're so close. What about your dream? I woke up. Why are you doing this? Why are you skipping school and acting tough and getting in trouble? Because... I want to know why, and I want to know right now. Because... I'm scared. I'm scared, okay? Scared of what? That I can't do it. That, that I'll fail. Arnold gives his grandpa some reassurance, telling him that they can do this together. He promises his grandpa that they can hit the books together and through their hard work, he'll be able to get his grade school diploma in no time. Grandpa Phil is hesitant because of how scary 6th grade is with all the big words and numbers, but with a little more guidance from Arnold reminding him how badly he wants that diploma, he decides that he's gonna give it another good solid try. After that, we get yet another nice montage of Grandpa Phil working together with Arnold to study to finally finish 6th grade, and by the end of it, he's in Principal Wartz's office in his cap and gown. After deliberating with Grandpa Phil's teachers for a bit, Principal Wartz walks right up to him and hands him his diploma. You did it, Grandpa! You graduated! Thanks to you, short man. So what's next? You gonna try for your junior high and high school diploma? High school? That's for losers! I don't have time for that anyway! I've got to run for president! And Pookie, you can be my campaign manager. What's our slogan? Melts in your mouth, not in your hand! Pookie, you're fired! Arnold, you're my new campaign manager! Now, there's a lot that we can say about this episode, but first things first, I have to talk about how true to life this episode actually is. By all means, we're talking about a children's cartoon, so of course on face value, this is meant to come across as a silly and funny episode, but the reality is, what Grandpa Phil went through as a kid was actually a very harsh truth for some children during the Great Depression. I did some brushing up on the Great Depression because it's been a while since I've studied it if I'm being honest, and yeah, in the 1930s the public education system definitely was not as regulated and funded as it is nowadays. We're talking one classroom schools teaching first grade through graduation, especially in rural areas. In 1932 specifically, the effects of the depression hit schools extremely hard, resulting in budget cuts, salary cuts for teachers, increased class sizes, and entire schools being shut down due to lack of funding. On top of the system itself being flawed though, some children, like Grandpa Phil for example, 
would end up leaving school behind and entering the workforce early to help provide for their struggling family. On the other hand though, in schools that did still have funding to stay open, there were actually students who stayed in school past their intended graduation time because they were struggling to find jobs in such a rough market. When you look at it under that light, it definitely adds to how morbid the situation really is. Phil was a bright kid who did great in school. He dreamed of getting his diploma and being very successful in his adulthood. However, he'd find himself forced to leave school and his goals behind to help his family survive. The saddest part though is the fact that in a sense, he's lucky to have had the opportunity to leave school and enter the workforce because elsewhere in the country, there was another kid who's ready to graduate but isn't able to enter the workforce because he can't find a job. Again, we gotta keep in mind that this is meant to be a lighthearted children's cartoon, but all things considered, the situation that they're portraying here is a really morbid one that some kids actually found themselves in during the time frame that they're referencing. I will say on that note though, this is one thing that I do really appreciate about Hey Arnold in general. This show really did an effective job of exposing us as kids to some historically accurate tragic events and how they had an effect on the lives of people around you even though years or even decades have passed since that specific event. We'd see it in this episode, and we also see it in the Christmas episode about Mr. Wynn and how he saved his daughter as a baby by giving her up because he was unable to flee from a war-torn Vietnam. Like, this show did such a fantastic job of tackling these kinds of situations, of course, but furthermore, I feel like it's really important that they did because this was a very mindful way to show the kids watching that life isn't always going to be sunshine, rainbows, and easy living. Sometimes life gets severely hard for reasons that are completely out of our control, and all we as people and citizens can do is survive to the best of our ability. Oftentimes, that comes along with sacrifices and further hardship. The thing is though, usually it gets better. There's typically a light at the end of the tunnel to look forward to, and this episode, as well as other episodes like it, taught us that even though you may reach that light at the end of the tunnel, and things get easier, that doesn't mean that the hardship that you went through isn't going to have some long-lasting effects that end up bleeding over into that light a bit. And of course, those lasting effects can vary wildly. For Mr. Wynn, his light at the end of the tunnel was escaping the war and immigrating to the United States. Once he got here, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows as the lasting effects afflicted him in the form of years of sadness and distress from having to give up his daughter, as well as the hunt that he went on trying to find her. Meanwhile, for Grandpa Phil, the light at the end of the tunnel was his family making it through the hardship of the Great Depression. Once the depression ended and the American economy would start to trend in a different direction, that light at the end of the tunnel would be effectively reached, but in turn, the lasting effects would be a lot different for him. He would reach a point where he likely could have made the decision to go back to school if he wanted to, but by that point, he was already years deep into an absolute trash job market that is just freshly in an upward swing now. I can see exactly why that would be a hard decision to make for him, especially dependent upon whatever field it was that he was working in as a young lad. Alongside that though, not having his diploma could have potentially resulted in him being passed up on certain jobs throughout his lifetime, keeping in mind that employers used to care a lot more about that decades ago than they do now. Furthermore, Grandpa Phil being the guy that he is, likely struggled living so many decades of his life knowing that he was unable to accomplish one of his earliest goals which he longed for so dearly. However, Phil finds himself in a really interesting situation now because he's in a spot where he finally has the opportunity to complete that goal, given that he's pretty much retired. I mean, of course, he runs the boarding house, but all of the people who live there are expected to, more or less, pull their own weight. So, in all reality, that's essentially a pretty cushy retirement gig for him. Semi-related to that note, I have to take a sec to recognize this episode for the fact that this one is a literal nightmare come true for me. 
For the last, like, 10 plus years, I've had a few variations of the same nightmare. In one of them, the government decides to retroactively change graduation requirements, making it so my diploma is no longer valid, meaning that I have to go back to school as an adult and graduate again, meanwhile keeping a steady job, raising my kids, and being a productive member of society. In another version of that nightmare, which this one I haven't had in many years, but my school district realized that they miscalculated some grades, and I actually didn't get enough credits to graduate, so they need me to go back to school to do it all over. Again, while keeping a steady job and raising my family. I don't know if anyone else has had this same dream, or one similar to it, but if you do, let me know in the comments down below, because you and I are one in the same, my friend. I feel like that right there is a bold statement on just how awful our education system is and how much negative pressure it puts on students. I mean, I graduated over a decade ago and I still have those nightmares every once in a while. In the context of this episode specifically though, Grandpa Phil having to go back to school at the age that he did is definitely something that ended up clearly being stressful for him, regardless of him being semi-retired and not having too much going on outside of school. This stress is another one of those long-lasting effects left as a result of having to leave school as a child. It's to the point where even just the thought of long division sends this elderly man into a panic, which he explains is because that's exactly where he was in school when he was forced to leave. This, without a doubt, highlights that Phil is self-aware as it pertains to his stresses related to having to leave school early. He's well aware that this is an issue for him, and he knows exactly where it stems from. That right there is half the battle in and of itself. Episodes like this are also important because they serve as a reminder that the only way to accomplish your dreams is to keep an eye on the prize and not give up. Throughout this one, we would see Grandpa Phil make it through the hardest parts of grade school as an 81-year-old man. It was a rocky journey for a moment there, but he moved past it and kept his eye on the prize. Of course, we have to keep in mind that your dreams do, however, need to be within logical reason. If something like this happened in real life, at least here in the United States, an 81-year-old man isn't going to be sent back to fourth grade with a bunch of little kids. Instead, he would have to go for his GED. But nevertheless, it's worth noting that the moral being pushed here is one that's worthwhile and a good one to be sent to anyone, really. It's never too late to achieve your dreams, and as long as it's within logical reason, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Outside of the kind of positive message that's being sent here though, like I said earlier, it was a rocky journey for a moment there. We see Grandpa Phil breeze through 4th and 5th grade like it was nothing, but then 6th grade comes around and the pace changes drastically. He went from finishing his work and getting promoted in a day or two, to having to go home and struggle with homework well into the night. When that struggle became too much to conquer though, Grandpa Phil ends up going down a dark path. This is the point where I start to question everything I thought I knew about him. We definitely have to take a moment to talk about the elephant in the room. The point where Grandpa Phil ends up going out to the movies with two 6th grade girls. This right here, as a child, just seemed like a quirky gag to me. When I was like 7, I thought it was mildly hilarious that this 81 year old man was roleplaying as a 6th grader. In hindsight though, looking at this as an adult, I can't help but wonder what Phil could have possibly been thinking. In absolutely no context is any of this appropriate. Him taking these little girls to the movies in the first place is a big no-no. Like, if you're not related to these kids in some way, taking them to the movies or even spending time with them in general is just weird and creepy. But like, the way they portrayed him walking out of the house and these girls are just hanging onto his arms while he stares down at them both smiling, it's all just so gross if I'm being honest. These children shouldn't be hanging out with adults, obviously, but especially not ones like Steely Phil, who at this point has nothing but negative intentions because he's in his bad boy era and he's trying to break some rules. And of course, like clockwork, if taking these little kids to the movies wasn't bad enough, he follows it up by taking them out spray painting after. This absolute numbskull decides to spray paint his nickname on the school dumpster, as if people wouldn't connect the dots. 
Then, of course, he ends up getting caught by the police, who at this point have him for vandalism and probably further investigation as to what he's doing hanging out with these little kids. Thinking further into it, I can't help but wonder what that police investigation could have possibly been like. I imagine that the cops probably called Connie and Maria's parents and sent them home to them. Grandpa Phil, though, who can be charged as an adult, likely had a lot of explaining to do. I mean, not only was the guy straight up caught red-handed committing a crime, but also, I'm sure the cops saw the fact that he was doing that with full-blown children, and they likely had quite a few questions about his intentions and what exactly he was doing with them that led them here to begin with. I'm sure that was probably not an easy one for him to explain. On top of all this happening though, I have to dive just a little bit further into his Steely Phil persona. Rewinding just a little bit here, we see him get fed up with his homework after struggling with it late into the night one night. He walks off in a huff and goes for the closet, tossing his graduation cap aside, and instead he reaches for an old leather jacket that he's had packed deep away, seeming like it hadn't seen the light of day for quite some time. The next day, we see him wear it to school, thus resurrecting his Steely Phil era after who knows how long. Honestly though, I can't help but wonder what Steely Phil was like in his prime. I have to assume that the 81-year-old version that we're seeing here is a much more watered-down version of the young Steely Phil. With that being said, if as an elderly man, he was taking little girls to the movies and vandalizing stuff, what crimes could he have possibly been committing in his past? Like, if this is the older and potentially slower version, how much worse could it have been back then? I also feel the need to point out that 81-year-old Steely Phil was full-blown treating the 6th grade like it was prison or something. Like, first things first, he walks up to the biggest and scariest guy there and threatens him in an effort to assert his dominance. I feel like that furthermore circles kind of back into him hanging out with Connie and Maria, who are likely the most popular of the 6th graders. He gets an in with the most popular people in class to yet again assert his dominance above everybody else. To address the Steely Phil portion of this episode as a whole though, it's worth pointing out that outside of him looking at these kids in a creepy way, Nothing else like super weird or inappropriate happens, but in general, him doing these things and committing crimes with literal children is just obscenely inappropriate, and it certainly doesn't take a stretch of the mind to realize that. Moving on from there though, there's a few other random things that I'd like to bring up as it relates to this episode specifically. First of all, I always found it so interesting in this show as a whole, like even outside of this episode, how they portrayed the jump from 4th grade to 5th grade to 6th grade. Like, if you compare the 4th grade kids like Arnold and Gerald to the 5th grade kids like Wolfgang and Edmund, the difference is a huge one. This show makes it seem like, very specifically, at the jump between 4th and 5th grade, your voice is gonna get super deep and you're gonna immediately hit puberty if you're a boy. Then, once you reach 6th grade, you're gonna be a fully grown man, coming home after a long day at the factory and putting down a couple Coors banquets before eating the meatloaf that Marge threw together for dinner. In all reality though, I love that they portray the differences between grades so drastically because when you are at that age, it really does seem like a huge extreme jump. When you're a 4th grader in elementary school and you get a small peek into the 5th grade classroom, it almost feels like peeking in at a different world. On that note though, we definitely have to take a second to talk about the 6th grader in the leather jacket that looks and sounds like a full-blown 30-year-old man. This kid was absolutely redonkulous. Grandpa Phil is probably like 70 years older than this guy, and he looks like he could straight up pick Phil up and break him in half with nothing but his bare hands. Furthermore, this guy just exudes that I'm intimidating and I know it kind of energy. Like, Phil sits down and this guy decides to shake his chair to mess with him. When Phil turns around to see what this guy wants, like any person probably would, this giant man-child hits him with the what do you recommend? Honestly, this is just so dumb. This guy thinks he's being intimidating, but in all reality, he's just kind of being annoying and asking stupid questions after doing stupid things. This part of the episode honestly just kind of drove me nuts. Phil shows up to 6th grade with hopes of just passing and finishing so he can get his diploma as soon as possible, 
However, pretty much every kid in class welcomes him with a grimace and a sneer. This definitely lends further context as to just how rude and nasty some kids can be. Previously, Phil arrived in Arnold's class and everyone laughed at him at first, but by the end of the day, everyone realized how cool that they thought he was. Then, when Phil got to 5th grade, Wolfgang and his friends were super rude to him at first. However, when Phil knocked their kickball right out of the park and broke a window, they quickly realized also how cool that they thought he was. Then of course, 6th grade comes around, and everyone is just immediately mean to him. That is, until he decides to turn bad and start to become a massive jerk like the rest of them kind of seem to be. On a more bright note though, this episode is yet another one that served as a testimony to just how great of a person that Arnold is. This episode hits extra hard when you keep in mind the context of where Arnold falls in his family. He's the child here. Grandpa Phil is supposed to be his guardian and set a good example for him, yet in this one, here Arnold is being the voice of reason for his own guardian and helping to steer him on the right path. This right here really paints a picture of what kind of a person Arnold is deep down inside. He's always doing the right thing and he's always willing to do anything he can to help someone. He's even willing to step up to the plate and be the adult in the situation when that's called for. Arnold is a fourth grader who, by every meaning of the phrase, is wise beyond his years. The thing is though, this all comes together to lead me to a weird crossroads. Like I brought up earlier in the video, all of these amazing traits that Arnold possesses aren't ones that someone is born with. He learned these behaviors somewhere, and odds are, they all came from his grandpa Phil and his grandma Gertie. Throughout this series, we would see many episodes where Arnold learns important lessons from them, or is able to solve a situation using wisdom that he's gained from them. It's interesting to me that this episode exists, because looking back on the whole show, we never really see Grandpa Phil painted in a light like this. Don't get me wrong, there would be times where we see him do things that are morally questionable without a doubt. But taking little girls out to the movies and committing vandalism is pretty wildly out of character for him. As it pertains to the rest of the dark side of Hey Arnold though, this episode really felt like it needed to be talked about now. Like I said earlier, I love the idea of making a super long video about both of Arnold's grandparents, but when I remembered this episode, it definitely made me take a sec to pause and second guess how I want to approach that idea. Grandpa Phil is a character that is usually painted in a pretty positive light. However, we definitely have to admit that he certainly isn't perfect and this episode is a huge example of that. But what do you guys think? Did this episode change how you think about Grandpa Phil? On top of that, do you think it should change the way that I approach the Dark Side of Hey Arnold video about him? Let me know in the comments down below, I always love seeing your guys' feedback. As always, I have to take a sec to give a massive shout out with so much love to all of my patrons over on Patreon, especially those of you in the true 90s kids tier. I appreciate every single one of you with every fiber of my being. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and give a little praise to the YouTube algorithm in hopes that it pushes this video to everyone else, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.